No, 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 no. The new projector, the other teacher's using it. Uh, okay. Uh, I like the old projector. It's old. Okay. <laughs> Electromagnetic waves. I'll write the name down and go to Ethan's and they should have it. Okay. They definitely should have those three books. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 definitely, yes, definitely. My mom likes I would copies, be but my mom says, okay, can I do the King of the Rings? Lord of the Rings. Oh. Yes. Ah, but it's a good first book. She read it in Chinese? The... The... the movie, okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, true, the movie is not as good as the last movie, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, I agree. The Lord of the Rings is much better than Hobbit. The, the last Hobbit yes. is not I think only the first one was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. second and third one, nah. <laughs> okay, Electromagnetic Waves. You got that title? Yes? Yeah, okay. So, um... We'll have a look at exactly what are electromagnetic waves. Okay, so firstly, light waves. Um, so actually, light, light that's coming out there, is actually a very special type of wave. Uh, it's an example of an electromagnetic wave. So this is a very special type of wave. So you know you have like an ocean wave, a sound wave, an earthquake wave, all different types of waves. Light is a special type called a, an electromagnetic wave, okay? Um, so you can just even write down light is an electromagnetic wave if you want. Uh, here are more examples of electromagnetic waves, okay? So here are other examples. So a radio wave is an electromagnetic wave. A Wi-Fi signal is an electromagnetic wave. A wave from a mobile phone, that's an electromagnetic wave. An X-ray when you go to the hospital. Uh, infrared from your TV remote. And um, I think it would be good if you write these examples down because sometimes for the wave question they ask for examples of things. So these are all examples of electromagnetic waves. It's from your remote for the TV, you know? Uh, ah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. You have them here on your phone? Yeah. Remote. Remote, yes. Remote. Got this? No. Yeah. So what is rather amazing, I think, about all these waves is that they're all the same thing. They're all the same type of wave. So when you think about x-ray at the hospital, and you think about your Wi-Fi signal, you don't think about them being the same. The same thing. Or when you think of a radio wave, maybe you can imagine a radio wave, yeah, that's the same as a, a mobile phone because you, you talk on them. But it's hard to imagine that all of these are the same thing. They're all the same thing. They all come from the same family. They're all made of the same stuff. So the only difference between a radio wave and an X-ray is the frequency. So the only difference between radio waves and X-rays is the frequency. But they're the same thing. They really are exactly the same thing. There's no difference except for their frequency. Uh, I think everyone has their own frequency. Yep, they do, yeah. So that's the only difference between these, is their frequency. Um, okay. You don't, have, you don't have to write all of that down, but you can make note of the frequency, but I'll make note of that again. Um, so look, here is an example. 
So, all right, here's this diagram here. So, up here, the waves are, the peaks are close together. This means they have a short wavelength, but a high frequency. Down the bottom, they have long wavelengths and uh, low frequencies. So, all of this is the same. It's all the same type of wave. The only difference here between the X-ray and between the radio is their frequency. Okay. Now, um, in the exam, they sometimes ask you to list this. To list this. this is called the electromagnetic spectrum. So what they would want in the exam is they would want a list from uh, low frequency to high frequency. So your list is low frequency is radio, and then microwave, then infrared, then visible, the light we can see, then UV from the sun, then X-ray in the hospital, and gamma ray at the power plant. Okay. So you t I'm sorry, you do need to memorize this list from low frequency to high frequency, okay? So we have radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma. They're a sound wave, yeah. Uh, but they also have a high frequency. They have a high frequency, yeah. Ultrasonic. Yeah, they should be. So you have radio, microwave oven, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma ray. Now, does anybody know where Wi-Fi is on this spectrum? Radio. Microwave. Where? Which? What are you saying? No. It is exactly microwave. Mm -hmm. So if you put your laptop in the microwave and close the door, the signal is blocked. Mm -hmm. You won't get a Wi-Fi signal mm -hmm. because the door blocks the microwave. So when you put your laptop in, you won't get a Wi-Fi signal. But you'll still get a mobile phone signal, uh, because mobile phones, I think, are a little bit to the left here, I think. Or maybe they're a little bit to the right. But they're not quite the same. So a mobile phone signal can go in and out of a microwave oven, but a Wi-Fi signal can't, because the Wi-Fi is actually the same frequency that you use to cook your food. Say again? If I move the different room, the Wi-Fi gets very... Well, this, you can interfere with this. So the signal won't pass easily through the wall. Mm -hmm. um, if you put the phone in... Well, don't have it <laughs> on. Have, it off, have the microwave <laughs> off. But the microwave oven, the door is made to block the microwave. So it stays in the microwave and cooks the food. I'm saying that the Wi-Fi is the same frequency, so if you put your laptop in the microwave and close the door, the Wi-Fi signal can't get out. But how do you know though? Like, we can't even see the bar because the microwave... You could, have a, you could have a video playing. Yeah, you could have a download or something. Have a download running, and then you should see it stop. Or a video call. Yeah, or video, yeah, video call. Yeah. Have a video call on Skype, put in the microwave and close <laughs> the door, and the call should... It should drop yeah. down. Let's check today. You should check it. You should check it. Yeah. yeah my laptop exploded. <laughs> <laughs> now, make sure the microwave is unplugged. Yeah. You want the oven to be off. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, you got this? Yes? Um, yeah, we'll talk more about this. So, the other thing is um, you need to know the wavelength. So, before you write it down, let me just explain. If you look here, for example, uh, where's microwave is not on this one, but microwave would be around about here. So, the uh, you can't quite see these, but these are all minuses. So, the, the uh, wavelength for microwave oven is around about here. That's 1 times 10 to the minus 4. So, it's a very, very small wave. And um, if you go to, down to... Uh, um, ultraviolet or x-ray, this is 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the minus 12, and gamma ray, 10 to the minus 14 meters. Things like radio, like FM radio, this is 10 to the minus 3. Um, sorry, is that, no, that's 10 to the 3, sorry. That's 10, oh, I can't see. This is. No, it's not actually. I'll need to make the. Actually, you know what? I'll open up the picture. That'd be easier. Uh, which number picture was this? My third picture, wasn't it? Because you need to num you need to write down the numbers on the last uh, graph. That the last picture you drew for me. So they also expect you to know the wavelengths here. Is it important? Yes, my landmark. Okay, go inside, so yeah. Let's open up. I need to zoom in, which I forgot how to do. Zoom in. Okay. Yeah, let's have a look here. So if we start from the big ones, this is 10 to the 4, this is 10 to the 2. FM, that's minus 2, is it? Yeah. Oh, look here, here, zoom. Ah, yeah, that's definitely minus. And then the next one after that is the radar, mm. uh, 10 to the minus 4. Do you know radar? Uh, in submarines, submarines, yeah, yeah. AM and FM both like the radio. They are, but um, and the FM one uh, has a smaller wavelength. The ra AM has a big wavelength, and in fact, this was one of the reasons FM is better than AM. Uh, so FM is minus two. AM is a really big wavelength, ten to the four. This means um, it's not. Yeah, it's. Oh, and there's other reasons too why AM is not so good. But anyway, you need these numbers. Now, you don't need all of them. So, what you could just write down for me here is um, the FM radio, uh -huh. 10 to the minus 2. No problem. 10 to the minus 2 meters. So, beside radio, radio, write 10 to the minus 2 meters. Okay. 10 to the minus 2. Do we need only, only, uh, just, just, just give me the FM for the radio, that's all. Okay. Um. Ah, you don't need that one. But it's radar will be... Ah, radar. Radar will be in between radio and microwave. It would be here. Mm. But you don't need it. Okay. Um. Do we have a microwave on this? No. No, we don't. Uh, we have infrared, so that's 10 to the minus 4, and now the visible light is 10 to the minus 7. So I would say infrared is about you know 10 to the minus 6 meters, so that would be infrared then. 10 to the minus 6. Infrared. Yeah, about this. Now, I will skip the visible light for a moment. 
Ultraviolet, the UV, is 10 to the minus 8. UV, ultraviolet, 10 to the minus 8. Um, the X-rays are 10 to the minus 12. What else do you have after X-ray? Gamma is 10 to the minus 14. Did we miss any of them? Uh, maybe like uh, 10 to the minus 4. Yeah, it's something like that. Is it minus 4? Is that what I said last time? Minus 4. Thank you, Pat Stephen. Uh, right. <laughs> and it might be minus 4. Yeah, microwaves be around about minus 4. Okay, now what uh, you also need for the exam is that different coloured light has different frequencies as well. So red light would have a frequency of 7 times 10 to the minus... Okay, so firstly, before you actually write this down, please note all of these are 10 to the minus 7. 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 7, okay? So the difference is for the red part colours, um, you have 7 times 10 to the minus 7. But as you move down, you get a uh, um, smaller wavelength. Yellow and orange would be around about 6. Uh, colours like blue and green is 5. And then down here is purple. Um, that's probably 4 then. It goes 7, 6, 5, 4. Okay. They do expect you to remember these numbers because what would happen in the exam is they would say a question like, what colour is this wavelength? So if the answer was 5.5 times 10 to the minus 7, that's in between this bluey colour and this yellowy colour, so that's a kind of green colour. Now I'll help you remember, these are the colours of the rainbow. Red, orange, orange yellow, yellow, green, blue, blue indigo, violet. These are the rainbow colours. So the rainbow goes from 7, red, all the way down to 4. So 7 to 4. Sometimes we use nanometers. So this is 700 nanometers, and this is 400 nanometers. Okay. Try and write or draw, write or draw this information. Minus seven. Minus seven. The final to ten minus seven is kind of Say again? This five? Five times, yeah. Yeah, this would be right. blue, yeah. Five is blue. Five is blue-ish. Okay, got that? No. No? Okay. You have this? No. No? Oh, goodness. Yes? Yes? Okay. So tell me this. Um, if you look at radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma, notice how as I go to the right, the wave has more energy. You know, it, it, it can do more damage. Radio waves don't hurt you, do they? No. But gamma and x-ray could hurt you. So another feature is higher frequencies and shorter wavelengths mean more energy. So you have high energy here and low energy here. I think you should note that on your diagram. So the left here is low energy and up here is uh, high energy. 
Um, which ones will kill you? Gamma, Gamma will, X ray, and ultraviolet. Mm -hmm. Which ones won't kill you? Radio, Radio microwave, infrared, and visible. No, you see, this is what people think, but microwaves are very safe. You just get burnt, like if you put yourself in the oven or cooker. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> these are all safe. Anything that's less than ultraviolet is safe. Anything that's ultraviolet or higher frequency is uh, dangerous. Okay. Uh, now, uh, features of electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. So these are three important properties. So firstly, there are transverse waves. Second property. Okay, are you ready? Second property is that for all electromagnetic waves, they all move at this speed called the speed of light, uh, C, and it's very fast, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in a vacuum, in empty space. They should always all move at this speed. So this is a fact. You know that speed of electromagnetic waves is always this in empty space. You got that? Yeah? Yep, everything. Wi-Fi, radio, infrared, everything. Okay? Yeah. And the third point is that um, electromagnetic waves need no medium. So, before we write that down, if you think about an ocean wave, what does an ocean wave move in? It moves in water. Sound wave moves in air. Yeah? Um, but electromagnetic waves can move in empty space. They don't need any pain to move in. They can move in empty space. This is very special. All other waves need something to move in, like ocean, sea, air, but they need no medium to propagate in. So electromagnetic waves need no medium of propagation. So this is actually uh, a, a special feature of electromagnetic waves. And this, um, when people discovered this in 1900, this is very surprising because it's uh, strange to think that you can have a wave, but there's nothing it's moving in. It's quite unusual. At the time, people thought it was moving in something we can't see, but it turns out it's moving in nothing, empty space. Uh, okay, continue. Yeah. Right, now... Because V is always equal to C for electromagnetic waves, then you can have V equals C equals lambda F. So if F is known, then so is lambda, because you, the C is a constant, yeah? So if I know the F, can I know the lambda? Yes. And likewise, if I know the lambda, I can know the F, because you have C is always lambda F. So if you know F, you know lambda, if you know lambda, you know F. So lambda is C over F, and F is C over lambda. So, this is also note. If the, F, if the frequency is big for electromagnetic waves, then the wavelength is small, small short. Um, or if the wavelength is big 
then the frequency is small. Small, yes. They have an opposite relationship. So big wavelength means small frequency and big frequency means small wavelength. Um, all I need you to write here is even just these two formulas if you want. Or well, whatever you want. I don't mind. It's your notebook. Okay, continue. But you're writing all of this down like it's important. It's, uh, well, it's conceptual. It's conceptual. It's a point. I, I well, yes. Okay. <laughs> all right, continue. Uh, okay, okay. Right, so some definitions. Um, polarization. Now, wait, 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 wait. Don't write it down yet because I need you to understand this before you write it down, okay? Polarization of light or any other transverse wave, but it's usually light um, or, uh, yeah, or any transverse wave, is when the vibrations are confined to a single plane of the wave front, also called linear polarization or plane polarization. So, look, this is, needs a picture to explain it, okay? So let me explain it here. Um, light is a transverse wave, so it's moving like this, okay? But when the light comes out uh, as a transverse wave, it's moving in many different directions. So, for example, you would have a wave, look, like this, moving like this, or you might have one in the other direction, moving like this, or one at an angle, moving like this. There's many transverse waves moving at different angles. Okay, so here's one coming out this way and then we could turn and there'll be one coming out this way. This is called a polarizer. Basically it's like um, what we looked at in the active listening. It's a piece of paper with lots of slits in it. What happens is when the light goes through this, only the light that's moving um, up and down will pass through. All the other ones will be blocked. So here you can see that only this one here. Uh, sorry, oops. This oh, uh -huh. yeah, sorry. This one here, down, up, down. This one here can pass through, but all these other ones at angles don't go through. So this is called polarization. It's like you block everything except for the waves moving in this plane. This is polarization. And they have uh, polarized sunglasses. Exactly. So the reason you do this is like with the sunglasses. So all, most of the light is blocked except for a little piece of it. So this is what happens in expensive sunglasses. Not cheap sunglasses, expensive sunglasses. The lenses are um, polarizers. Okay, so I would like you to write this definition down and try your best to draw this. What's the difference between cheap sunglasses and expensive? Just that. Well, I think the cheap glasses, all they do is just put some cheap. brown color in uh -huh. cheap plastic, whereas with the polarizer, it actually is slits yeah. running down the lens. So, th I mean, this would be much better for your eyes because it really does block most of the light. So, you know the way glasses have a rating of how, their UV rating almost? Uh, the high UV protection glasses will be polarizers like this. Okay, try your best to draw this, please. <coughs>
This is also used for um, radio waves. And TV waves. For some reason, I have to look into the reason why, but it's better if you polarize the wave befo uh, before it's transmitted to everybody. I think it makes the signal clearer. Do you have see friends? Yeah. Who? Mm -hmm. Now we get a uh, business student? Yeah. Remo? No. John Wei? No. January or September? September. September? No, I mean January. Is it Sam? Who is it? Okay. <laughs> All right. Did you draw this? No. No. Like the experiments with this can pass, but others can't. At any other angle, they won't. Yeah. Are you drawing beautiful pictures? No, ugly. Oh, <laughs> that is ugly. Yeah. Try to try to explain. Ah, it's okay. Let's see. Maybe I can understand. Ah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. People forget. Can we continue? No. No. Oh. What's your holiday plan? Do nothing. <laughs> My holiday plan. <laughs> Do nothing. Oh. Read a book. Pizza. Read a book. <laughs> Go to a restaurant, watch some TV, go to Batman. Yes. Yes. Tomorrow, yeah. This is my plan. Yes. <laughs> okay. Continue. Mhm. Mm okay. Uh, Amanda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So let's have a look at some questions. So first question is, what is the frequency of red light? and the wavelength is 700 nanometers. I want you to calculate that for me. You have the formula, it shouldn't be too difficult. So do you know the frequency? No. Do you know the wavelength? Yes. Do you know the speed? Yes. Yeah. So let's calculate it. Yes, 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 yes. Do we have an answer? Hey, get off the phone. I want you to do this one. Come on. Is this the question? The, yeah. <laughs> question. <laughs> what is? <laughs> yes, it's the question. Yes. Oh. 
Okay. Anyone got an answer? Uh, no, I need to go on because I want to do a second lesson. So if we look here, um, the V, the V is um, 700, no it's not, it's 3, it's C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. The lambda is 700 nanometers, which is 700 times 10 to the minus 9. You know that V equals F lambda, so that means F equals V over lambda, which is C over lambda, which would be 3 times 10 to the 8 over 700 times 10 to the minus 9, which is 4.29, or roughly so. Uh, what's the unit for frequency? Hertz. Okay. Yeah? Next one. Yes. Next. Homework question. So again, very simple to do. Okay, can I close this? Mm -hmm. yeah.